how does the sim racing compare to the, the, real, thing? the real life but not the real thing mm. those things are bloody fast man yeah. i think that much faster than my rally car that i'm driving for this season <laughs> Side of the podcast. So, welcome to the podcast. This is episode number six of the Z Gear podcast. Really? Yeah. I think was number done... six a high or a low? If we're doing a mic check, six six would be a high. Six would be a high. Yeah, six. Well, on this high note, yeah. <laughs> we've <laughs> we'll got like our guest. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Kambali Chani. In the, in, the, in the video, is this way? It's like the pew 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 pew. Yeah. yeah. Can do that, that, yeah. Does that come yeah. like after the, the Z Gear some... podcast? No, no, no. After the guests. You okay. come Shani, then you do that. Yes. <laughs> awesome. What's okay. your thing? Mm. All right. And uh, Patrick. Yes. Mr. And Patrick. Sampa back on the podcast after how many episodes, sir? Two? Two. Two episodes missing. Yeah. Glad to have you, sir. It's been quite a lot of stress. You don't know how much it eases me to be on the podcast and have a co-host. You know what I mean? Because I don't have to think about everything myself. But then, yeah, yeah Sampa no, has been I away have... for two weeks. But, you know, I think we managed yeah you're doing well managed. i mean he watched the, the yeah, last the, few and he's okay so mm, i did i'm sure everybody's okay yeah. well maybe we're yet to see huh well, we're yet to see, <laughs> yes <you> <laughs> but we're glad to have you back bro yeah no yeah. um we're here we're yet here to talk about sports e e-sports, e-sports. yep yeah and i think no better person to have on the podcast than mr kambali chani who by far as far as i know is the only person involved in esports there's a couple of guys like fairway who has done sim racing a bit nothing professional cuthbert as well i think cuthbert and um who else do i know Chosa. Cuthbert, a- aka sky sky voltex yeah. yes um when his name popped up the first few times it wasn't sim racing was it no. sky uh, no. Oh, Kambali. Okay. Focus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the, you just took a turn. You took a quick turn. No, you took a quick turn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was an esports. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing I I was known for in motorsport was karting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think that was the main thing. I started out with karts. Um, at extreme karting, uh, yes. you remember? Yes, uh, Tinta, yes, yes. We I spent actually quite a bit of time uh, doing karts with Tinta. Mm. He he was an avid fan before. <laughs> uh, back then, actually, I'm gonna spill a please, secret on this please. podcast. <laughs> What's this? Some secret? people might not know this. Back then, he was only called Tinta. Well, <laughs> not Mr. Patrick. When the glasses <laughs> came, <laughs> when the glasses came, we have to refer to him as Mr. Patrick. Yeah. So, yeah. so just in case serious. you didn't know, yeah. So. <laughs> I started in carts. Um, um, my is this is this the part like I should give an origin story? No, not really. I, I you know, when I was uh, going through um, the basic skeleton of, of this podcast with Patrick, um, it just says e e e e. Yeah, I'm like e. Everything is e-sports. e-sports, e-sports, e-sports. <laughs> but I remember at one point you drove a Formula something car. Yeah. Unless that was also e-sports. You drove a Formula car. So, uh yeah. no, I I, no? Di- I didn't drive a Formula car. I drove a GT car. A GT uh, car. No, there's a GT touring car. Mm-hmm. Hot hatch. What's the uh, difference? So, I was like in uh, um Volkswagen Academy in Volkswagen Motorsport Academy in South mm-hmm. Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like 2019 and then 2022 I drove um FIA Rally Star program, which I think is what he might be referring to. What did you go to, to Europe for? I didn't go to Europe. Well, oh. I went. I, I went to Europe when I was younger, but ah. I didn't go to Europe for for racing. So we've nah, been mixing okay. up a lot of things. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, so you go where the <laughs> opportunity is. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> my my biggest uh, um, disadvantage is that I'm poor and I'm racing. So <laughs> yeah, it's a very um, bad combination. He is raising money yeah. for a haircut, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna expect you guys to like do some Z gear thing, put it down there, and you they gotta send For like donations. mobile money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Roll, like, because you brought it up. Mm. Because I brought it up, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, GoFundMe. GoFundMe, mm. basically. Yeah. But how do, how does how does one find funding, you know, when you're trying to get into <laughs> the racing scene? <laughs> racing, yeah. <laughs> That is the million dollar question. Mm. If you knew that, you'd be a very rich man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically, um, in my experience, it's uh, be good at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's um, racing. Be good at racing. If you can be good at racing, 
um, it makes people more inclined to kind of want to invest in what you're doing, you mm -hmm. know, like um, put some money behind you. Mm -hmm. um, another thing would be probably even more important than being good at racing is um, be very professional in your interactions, yeah, uh, how you people. carry yourself yeah. and how you brand your content, how you brand um, your interactions, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I think be very professional in that in that sense. And um, I have something to offer, you know, you need to People, money is very difficult to make, apparently. Yes. And um, people don't like to give it away for free, whether corporations mm -hmm. or just um, individuals, yeah. individuals. So, yeah, have something to offer. Whatever it is, that's the job. You know, if you really want to get a significant amount of money uh, to fund a racing career, you have to understand what you have to offer and yeah. uh, how to present it to people that are interested in that thing that you have to offer. So. Um, yeah, I think in a very in a very short um Chazida Chasira Chizungu. Chasira Chizungu but yeah Pame Vamenevo. Okay. So I mean for you you've been like you are saying, and you've been in uh, doing sports I mean motorsports for quite a bit. You started with the carts. Yeah. I think then went to Volkswagen Academy. Yeah. And then you did um, eSports. E yes. And now, we've, you know, heard a bit about your, you know, getting into into rally. Is it common that people who get into these sports don't have money like you? And I'm just saying like you because you keep telling us that you're poor. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so no. I'm not trying to offend you or anything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it I a know. common thing, you know, like people with... <laughs> no money getting into it or is it generally occupied by people who come from a background of money uh, i'll start with answering the second point remember i said you need to um understand what you have to offer mm. and unfortunately for me i can offer poorness <laughs> so <laughs> the poor ambassadors hit me up uh, okay um, a voice for the people that the thing, people, yeah. but yeah in i would say that that is the case but not by design you know it's um even sim racing in a, at a competitive level is mm -hmm. um, quite expensive. When you look at the budgets between the pro teams and yeah. the guys who are just like kind of um, mid-level and all that stuff, yeah. it, the, the difference is insane. So I wouldn't say that it is that way by design. Um, you because because racing is such a such a great sport. Yeah, a lot of the people that tend to indulge it are very enthusiastic. So um, they do the best that they can. You know, mm. and because of that passion, you get um, many people that necessarily don't have enough money to go racing in real life yeah. that make that small investment that they can make that first step into sim racing. And so with that, I think that's what makes it common that most of the people involved in sim racing are people that um, have money or don't have money. Yeah, yeah, that don't have a lot of money. Yeah, OK. You know, so maybe before we we dwell on 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 the sim racing. Um, when we're speaking off camera, you said something very interesting to me, and I think it's something that I'll, that will probably stand out for a while. You said you love cars not because you love cars; you love cars because you love racing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that um, because you can race cars, therefore the interest in cars is there. Is there anything else that you would race if you could race? Mm -hmm. Seeing as you love racing uh, more than you love cars, I'm waiting for jets to become cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking. F35s are still quite a bit uh, up there, yeah, you know. Yeah. But but yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't say I would like to race jets, but I I I found that I, I'm interested in that experience of um, I, I I don't know if the right word is thrill. Mm -hmm. Is the but right word, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm interested in that experience of feeling what is that like to go through those motions and and when you look at the videos of what it's like when they're doing those Fuji um, spins and maneuvers, yeah. and all that stuff, I think it's amazing and like you see the face and how we interact and I think in a way uh, for me that's what's really kind of fascinating about racing it's sometimes in my mind i imagine i imagine that it's um like bending are you guys familiar with avatar the last yes, yes yes i imagine that it's like bending it's the one thing that as humans in real life that we do that we can like into bending because when you're in the car in my mind uh how i imagine racing is that we are um directing the flow 
of momentum mm-hmm. you know so every time that you get on the throttle you move it forward you bend it forward mm-hmm. every time you get on the brake you bend it um um what <laughs> <laughs> like Beckham. also forward but that's physics yes. yeah yeah you know so so you just kind of directing the, the momentum flow, the yeah. flow of momentum around and kind of using your mind to understand in that moment simultaneously mm-hmm. how you your mind your imagination and the world are interacting with the forces that are around you and mm-hmm. that's I, f- i feel like that's beautiful you know yeah. it's it's almost superhuman yeah. so yeah with that that's why i would like to experience the thrill of like being in a jet, jet or whatever yeah but other th- other than that racing no i don't want to do boats <laughs> definitely don't want to do mm-hmm. boats yeah, it's different isn't it but I've, you know i've always thought that i've always thought that people who race cars are into cars no like no like deep into cars and yeah. the funny thing is when we got to, when we got on the podcast and we we're setting up and <laughs> kambali was asking me what is this yeah. what does this do? i'm like this guy wants to race <laughs> he's been racing go-karts he wants to race rally cars but he doesn't know an air filter so it's actually i knew it's the actually a very was the other thing that's a disclaimer <laughs> <laughs> it was the other thing yeah yeah and just so in case my boss is watching yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually um it doesn't take you knowing a car like you know the mechanical side of it for you to actually be a good racer right so well, it's it works to some extent for me uh mm. for me the key thing that because so to be good at racing mm-hmm. it's thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of practice yes the same thing over and over and over and over again and that's the reason why you've got the professional drivers that make it to the mainstream uh, motorsports the you know like stage, the world yeah. stage mm-hmm. they start when they're four or five years old that's a privilege that no one can afford you and mm-hmm. um in my own analysis that we've been looking that is one of the reasons why a lot of the people that for example come from karting sorry they come from esports yeah when they get into the real sports thing you know they make the transition Mm-hmm. they struggle a little bit it's not necessarily that they're not talented enough to do it it's that you need a privilege to experience making mistakes in very high value equipment and scenarios yeah that's the privilege that the professionals are provided mm-hmm. you know and we only get to do that in sim racing so making the mistakes that is yes uh, yeah okay. mm-hmm. making the mistakes and all the practice and so over time you kind of can get overwhelmed with that experience when you make that transition mm-hmm. and so when you're practicing if you don't if you if you don't have the track time to kind of uh, back your your I don't want to say your talent your talent yeah mm-hmm. you, if you don't have the track time to back you to hone the skill yeah. mm-hmm. yes yeah. then it means that you need to focus all of your efforts and all of your mentality and all of your time on learning the driving technique learning the right way to uh, rotate the car mm-hmm. to um, make the motions that you need to make all of that type of stuff learning the race craft by the end of it physically mentally you are dead you hardly have any amount of time to learn about the um, the internal um, yeah, anatomy of the car all, mm-hmm. all that stuff and the best part is that whether as a racing driver or esports If you're in a proper environment, yeah. you don't have to. Mm. There are probably racing drivers that can go their whole life never having changed a spark plug, maybe even a, a light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. Because all you need to do is understand how to drive the car and what uh, role all those things play. Yeah, yeah, how to drive the car, how to rotate it, and if something is not working the way that you want it to, you need to be able to um um communicate, communicate that, yeah. you need to be able to communicate that information to the engineer or the mechanic and they'll make those changes mm-hmm. that's why racing is so expensive because you always have all the professionals that are the best in the in their field that are working to provide you the best um, platform to make the changes so as, as a driver you would just say to the mechanics the brakes don't feel right is it too hard too soft and what then they make the adjustments for you so you, you don't say, necessarily have to know you you will say to the engineer the engineer will say to the mechanic ah okay 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 that's okay. if you're rich <laughs> okay <laughs> otherwise well, otherwise guys, you need to otherwise, figure it out otherwise if you're not rich you will have that conversation but it will be with yourself ah okay okay and so then first you, have, you have it, it yeah you have it as yourself to the engineer in the mirror okay and then the guy in the mirror he understands and then he tells the mechanic he tells back back to you and mm. then you go now with the spanner okay this is where yeah yeah um 
yeah, I, I see we are we are moving very quickly into esports. Um, another conversation we had off camera. Mm. See, too many conversations off camera. <laughs> um, the reason why I asked about the um, loving cars or loving racing or liking cars versus loving racing, and that's why you're mm. into it. I was trying to drive at passion. Remember, we were asking Seth, um, is he following in your footsteps? I mean, other than what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like him. <laughs> Does not look as good as this. Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a haircut, so I mean, yeah, it, a few it counts points for above. Something. Yeah, don't yeah, don't let these people make you feel good. I am we'll our put mom's Seth best on the son. Screen and let the people <laughs> decide. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, he's what? 18 years old, right? Uh, yeah. Is this something that you think he wants to do to follow after your footsteps or at least to take it to another level or do you think he wants to go be a lawyer or an accountant so um or chris brown <laughs> just, just saying. so um for me i never really cared about cars like generally i i, I don't care about the anatomy whatever whatever mm. i care about racing them that has always been my thing but actually for us we come from the background um uh our father was a mechanic well we we have a we we have a, a shared mom and a different father mm -hmm. so our stepfather that we share he was a mechanic he was a lecturer at uh, different places here in in zambia and so that's where kind of the mechanic background comes from mm -hmm. and uh, i know seth and my other brother who's not here they always spent time with him um working on cars that was a, a frequent pastime uh -huh. uh, i never did it uh, the times where I was like forced to do it, and I'll <laughs> but just where like, were you when they when they the went? Yeah, the when they were <laughs> checking was, out cars and I stuff. I was in the queue for the haircut, watching Formula One <laughs> because they had DSTV and we didn't. Exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> I like that. I like. That. Yeah, mm. but but yeah, I was mostly watching racing. You mm. know, so I was like away watching racing, and um, eventually that was like our dream. Mm. It was like. Um, but my father was going to be like our uh, chief mechanic crew and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to be a racing the driver. Race I wanted to do it, you know. But for them, it was kind of like a pastime. I think it's mm. a way in which they bonded that they shared. Um, my dad shared his knowledge with, with, with them and they picked up on a few things. But there is a real passion in our family between my brothers um, mm. and I for, for racing, for yeah. motorsport, for automotive stuff. Um, for me, it's just not in the anatomy side of it. I, I want to race the cars and I want to go fast and yeah. I want to compete. Uh, just on that, this is a question directed to Seth. Um, I know he's not in the, in, the, in the podcast, but maybe we'll amplify his answer. If you could race in any discipline, uh, right? Um, any discipline, let's forget about money. Based on your background and how you've been brought up, what would you race? GT3. GT3. Yeah. What is GT3 for people like me who don't know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a Porsche. It's not a Porsche. It's Porsche. No, 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 it's not specific. It's a class. It's yeah, a class, it's a class of racing, racing where you get yeah. like um, sports cars. It's yeah. sports car racing generally, but then you've got like um, a um, specific set of regulations, mm -hmm. and then the cars and manufacturers have to adhere to those specific regulations. Ah, okay, and then yes. They try to balance it up. So you've yes. got like Porsche, mm -hmm. you got like Ferrari, you got Mercedes, BMW, mm -hmm. stuff uh, like is, that. Is, that's the one that has the weird looking Porsches and Mercedes. Uh, they've got funny cars. kits. The yes. factory cars yeah. with the body kits. Ah, yes, with body kits. That's GT3. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, perfect. I think we might have. It might not have been GT3, but the, the racing track in Chingola was for for one of those. Yeah, they had uh, GT racing. They had GT racing. It was oh. not as advanced as that. But yeah, I it remember. Was still, okay. It was a circuit. It's a circuit, yeah. This is, what? Uh, Lawrence Allen. Yeah, I haven't been there in a while. It's it's It was built specifically to for these international. I don't know which one specifically, which class. Mm. I, no, they did all, all sorts of racing there. Apparently, it was a big uh, motorsport hub here in Zambia. And What uh, happened? You know, there's been so many references to Chingola, man. <laughs> so there's actually, so many not, references uh, to uh, as, as far as I understand, it's not yeah. only Chingola. Those uh, Ndola as well had a circuit, a real mm -hmm. circuit that yeah. they, they were racing on. Um, fr from my own observation, someone needs to go to Ratsa, give them hell, because I think <laughs> Mimosa is a racetrack. Yes, yes. Yeah. Also, yeah. Yeah. And I think that maybe we need to print another number please. It was a it was <laughs> <laughs> to get the attention. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask nicely, it doesn't mm, work. I have to do something yeah. illegal. Yeah. No, I, I have something else in mind. Maybe that will get the attention. Mm -hmm. I, I, I sincerely think that 
The that was a track. Uh, it looks. Yeah, it looks like a track yeah, because track, yeah. there's a. It looks like a half oval banking. Yeah. Mm. Through uh, through some section through there. Yeah. Um, and if if that is the case, I think that they need to give it back to the <laughs> to the community. <laughs> the no, yeah. I'm I'm saying this. This is the one thing that I'm gonna say with a straight face in yeah. this podcast. If that was a racetrack, I think that they should give it back mm -hmm. in some capacity. They should refurbish it, and it should be something that the motorsport community to, can go yeah. and you know indulge because it helps keep the racing in a safe environment, mm -hmm. and that's something that is very, very Important, required yeah. in mm -hmm. our country. You know, we need that step to be taken forward. So, yeah. so yeah. I, I second a word here. I think it's it's very important um, passion. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, like, like you said, Tinta. <laughs> ah, don't do that, man. It's Mr. Patrick. <laughs> As Mr. Patrick said, right? Yeah. Um, the the default is, oh, he's racing. He must be into cars, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and not saying that you're not, but you are not into cars in the mindset or in the in the understanding we think you yes. will be into cars. Not not that you don't know anything, but just that you're focused on racing and. I think it's the passion that mm. has. This was calling Ratsa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Ratsa was calling. No, oh, yeah. uh, okay. You, there was that picture that I posted on on the Z Gear page, eh, where there was a phone call uh -huh. and uh, the Z Gear plate. Yeah. So I had to change my friend's name into Ratsa and oh. put a Ratsa picture. <laughs> <laughs> so now he saw that picture and he thought Ratsa is calling. <laughs> it's my friend. No, oh, it's, it's okay. my friend. Yeah. Okay. It's what we do for content. Yeah. Anyway. Let's do it. <laughs> so, do you want to run it back from passion? Which one? The one that used to show on ZNBC back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, I'm, I was like, your, your driver. Your driver into... Because, look. Um, Go-karts, right? Yeah. Then eSports. Then we didn't even get to spend. At one point, spend came in. Yeah. What were what you doing for spend? What was the spend thing about? So, um, it's a long story. <laughs> is he racing too? Is yeah, e e sports. Oh, um, yeah, e sports. E sports. <laughs> yeah, do you want me to answer that now? Or do no, you want to finish the. Just, just a. Just a uh, my point is, we've seen you um, from, from when your name showed up, right? Up yeah. until now. There's been. The graph is almost like a boost curve. You know, like if your car is turbo charge, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're gaining some momentum mm -hmm. upwards, mm -hmm. it looks like to me. Uh, and somewhere in between, there's also something about um, a racing academy. I don't know if it has to do with your current engagement or not. Um, what's keeping you there? Because you're not, you haven't had seat time yet, right? What's keeping you there? And that's where my question was coming from. Because right. sometimes if we have the right motivation, the right fuel, we stay and see it through right is it passion yeah okay so i'm gonna answer that and probably that will eventually drive into how i ended up with spen mm -hmm. um so yeah what's keeping me in racing uh i tried to quit basically ever since i started racing it's been lots of voices from outside of my head telling me that i don't deserve to do this at least from the way that no one really says it to you in that way but people speak uh what, what people say is not heard by the words that they use it's by the way that they um, carry themselves when they speak it to you and the only thing i've heard ever since i started racing is that you can't do this you shouldn't be doing this and you don't deserve to do it and it's not just from like people from outside or whatever it's people very close you know very close to to me to where I am and all of that stuff and so eventually with the pandemic the 2020 was such a horrible year man. yeah hey. mm, for a lot of people horrible yeah. year um, so basically with 2020 I've come to an agreement um, I, I've made a deal I won't mention how I've made a deal that I will do academics on the condition that my racing is fully funded and mm. so it's 2020 uh, hands have been shaken and all of that stuff and um, I'm fully funded mm -hmm. two weeks to go I'm supposed to race in the South African Road Tax Championship including the Africa uh, Open mm -hmm. which is the biggest uh, basically back then was the biggest uh, karting race that you could do uh, as an African in Africa if you won that you go 
to race in the World Road Tax uh, Championships, which is like a... I think it was fully funded or something like that. You get a proper opportunity to race against the best mm -hmm. from around the world. And so it's it's 2020. Um, it's two weeks before I fly out. We buy the go-kart and I'm doing my first test. And a few weeks after that is going to be my first race. And the world is closed. Yeah. The world is closed. You know, yeah. there's nothing that we can do. And I'm thinking... This has to be a joke, you yeah. know. Like I feel like I'm living in so close, yeah. Mm. I, I feel like I'm living in a simulation where everything has to go bad for me. It can't be real. Yeah. But um, I mean, I've come so far, and I'm thinking, no matter what, this is gonna happen. You know, if it's the last thing that I do, so I'm deep. gonna go for this race. Mm. And time keeps going on, and the world's not opening up again. And I'm speaking to the people that I've made this agreement with, and eventually. It comes to a thing where it's we're gonna make an executive decision. They will no longer be racing for you, mm -hmm. and um, there's gonna be a hundred percent indulgement in, in in education and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, not the deal. You can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you might you might need to like do <laughs> yeah. not, not the right one. And um. so. It, it's it's at that point that I don't have any more money, I don't have any more opportunities, and I don't have anywhere to do any racing. Yeah. And um, I I think okay, what can we do? I look to I'd, I had already at that point started doing some sim racing. Um, I borrowed a uh, steering wheel from from a friend of mine, Joshua Manamuke. I think you got, you guys might know him. Yeah. He did a Formula Three test. A few years ago, I think you wrote something about him. Yeah. Well, many people. If you were agreeing, at least. Fair <laughs> <laughs> He's a really good friend of mine. He's probably the best friend I've ever made through yeah. racing. Um, very talented driver. So I've borrowed that from him, and we've been indulging in some sim racing. Mm. You know, just to keep keep the skills up. Yeah. Yeah. When I first got into sim racing, it wasn't to compete. It was to improve my capacity to um, to drive. In real cars and stuff like okay. that yeah and so we get to that point and I, i've got nothing to do i got and nowhere to go and so it's time to stop you know like we there's no other option was that the time you made that post um about you never racing again i think i'd seen that come up on facebook i retired at some point yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I will, I will never i retired again or something like it that, wasn't that know? dramatic <laughs> I, I don't think yeah, it was pretty it's, deep. Does that look like regret? Like, <laughs> it was pretty deep. Mm. <laughs> I've never regretted racing. Mm. I only regretted not racing. Yeah, the post. You know, Do you regret the post. No, I. Did you take it down? No, it's everything still is still there. So basically, um, you probably go back and like yeah, screenshot it. Yeah, check it. Like, yeah, this is what I was talking it. about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, it, it was kind of a decision to say like, okay, I don't think that anyone wants me to do this. Uh, I think that everyone might feel like they're suffering because I'm doing this and I don't want to do what other people are doing because um, if they can't support me in the one thing that I want to do on my own, you know, like I think I showed that I wanted to do this, you know, uh, I don't think uh, that there was any doubt. Then I didn't trust that I would have the support to do anything else that they would say that, you know, you should do this uh, adequately. And so I figured that I was going to stop racing and I was going to do something of my own. And so which didn't involve school? Yeah. Okay. No, I was going to do school on my own. I didn't I just didn't like I had to find a way to do something somehow. Uh -huh. But what I didn't want is to be told what to do. Um, uh -huh. I just I didn't trust anyone after that. Just I didn't trust that anyone could see what I wanted to do that anyone um would be able to fathom to the way that I wanted to do things. And mm. so after that, I stopped racing. And for a long time, I did nothing. Like, I was I was in line. Like, I had everything in line and everything. I was going to get a job in uh, computer science. Mm. And I had this, like, probation period. And I had to learn this uh, programming language and everything. And every day I woke up. And every day I went to the computer in the morning and everything. And every day I hated it yeah i absolutely hated it and i couldn't do it like after a while i couldn't do it the only thing i could think about was racing and um after i quit racing 
I met. Retired. I retired. <laughs> After I retired from racing. Underage. I, okay, yeah, yeah. I met um, Daniel Owenson, my brother. So I had moved out of uh, my mom's house at that time. Mm-hmm. And I was living with um, my brother, who is my cousin, but we've basically grown together. So we were, we were sharing a house. And he was trying to start a new business. And he had invited a few people over uh, to see if they could um, invest or stuff like that. And so I met Daniel Owenson who was the uh, head of SPEN in the southern region at that time. Mm-hmm. And um, out of interest, he wanted to try my simulator. And so he gave it a shot. And um, a few months later, you know, I mean, we had a good time on that time. We had a good time on that day when he, he tried it out and everything. And um, that ended there. I never spoke to him for months. Mm-hmm. A few months later, he called me. Um, I think that they had had a conversation with um, a few friends of his um, and they had told him I think about my racing career and all that stuff and uh, he was interested in getting into sim racing he hadn't stopped thinking about it and mm-hmm. he wanted to was make... Was that the first time he, he tried it out? Oh, yes. he had done some sim racing before? Yeah. Okay. So he wanted to have a go at it and so he called me and said hey uh, I'm thinking of getting into sim racing can you help me? I said yeah sure no problem. Um, and so we had that conversation and as I helped him get through that process uh, mm-hmm. of uh, getting his sim done and all of that stuff, uh, he heard more about my story and um, he said, hey, I think you're really good at racing. I think that you deserve a chance and I'm going to give it to you. And so <sighs> Spen Racing was spin. born. Mm-hmm. You know, Daniel invested a lot of his own money and resources to help make that project work and we wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for Daniel and I look back now and I'm like extremely grateful for that opportunity and I still hope you know like when I race now before before I quit before I retired Retired. (laughs) before I retired racing (laughs) yeah it was such a stressful environment because I was racing to like, I had to prove people that, you know, yeah, I'm worth, I, I'm I'm worth, worth this, yeah. you know, you should look at me, I'm worth it and all of that stuff. And no matter what I achieved, and I made sure that every year we achieved something, mm-hmm. no matter what I achieved, it was, I was never... Ask, yeah, did you win? I remember mm-hmm. you posted a couple of, we qualified several times, but I think we won too, isn't it? In, in esports? Yeah. Yeah, we won quite a lot. We won uh, a couple. We we won quite a few races in, in esports in the F3 series championships that we raced and F4 as well. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, the title eluded me. I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> we hear. I'm going back we for hear. that title. But the title eluded me in Formula 3 and Formula 4. Um, but it was just so competitive. It's the best drivers from around the world. So it's a world. world, world championship pretty much yeah mm. okay. it's a it's a league but it's within the platform of i racing it's still many of the best racing drivers on that platform from different places in the world okay. so in its own right it can qualify as, uh, as a world okay. championship and um yeah we, we we won quite a few races uh, in that and um yeah the championship eluded me my best finish was third in our class podium finish yeah so at the end of it you know i was racing before this i was racing to like prove and all of that stuff and this time when i came back it was to honor the commitment it was no longer just something for myself you know i wanted Mm -hmm. to say thank you for believing in me because i know what it's like when when you're not worth it you know when no one wants to look at you and people can see sometimes a lot of the time people can see that that you're good at what you're doing and it's because of that that they won't help you Mm. That I think that was a lot of the time because in racing you are surrounded by a lot of very because of the nature of the sport you're surrounded by a lot of very um, well to do and well placed people in society yes. uh-huh. and uh, there were a lot of good people that helped me but there were also a lot of people that um, held their hand simply mm. because um, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> going to make any speculations. <laughs> I'll leave it at held their hands. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, there's something that keeps running um, through my mind. I, I just want to get an idea of what success is for you. Because I think as you are sharing about how you are uh, racing to try and impress other people, 
there's that aspect of whatever impressing them looks like but what is it what is it for you what makes you feel like you're doing you're doing well or you're doing good and you can keep moving forward if i can show up to a race we're rolling baby <laughs> that's a success <laughs> for you we're rolling because okay, cool. it i think it's very underrated how mm. much it takes to be to able show to up. show up that's yeah. it's it's so hard to be a racing driver yeah. it's so hard to be a racing driver and th- if if it was easy then probably we all would be yeah, you know yeah. but it, it's such an underrated um privilege to yeah. be able to be there to be there in that position that you're driving and people believe in you and everyone is coming together yeah to put all of that together for you so i mean on a personal level for me if we're there we're driving we're smiling it's a success yeah it's, it's success. all good you know yeah but uh, but other than that it's a very personal note to me to mm. get a good result for my team and so i always push myself mm. that's very good um yeah so now we we've understood came from karting um covid didn't help anybody mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um you carried the zambian flag to win quite a few races mm. um, and now I think it's because of you that Zambia Motorsports Association recognizes e-sports e-racing mm. e-sports, e-sports as a motorsport discipline for for Zambia I know we've had at Mulungoshi International Conference Center you're gonna get me in trouble here <laughs> well, I'm already in trouble you're gonna get me in more trouble <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, there's a few uh, this, there's a few people from the esports uh, racing commission that um i think they will prefer that we don't speak about it but i think i'm at liberty to do so so i mean i will make clarifications on that of course uh, i will start by saying i don't know i don't i uh, i don't want to be arrogant so i'm going to say that it's not because of me uh, that the ZMSA uh, has that platform. Mm-hmm. Um, the FIA have made a big investment into helping expand the um, different ASNs around the world mm-hmm. that are affiliated with them, mm-hmm. uh, help expand their capacity to help uh, grow grassroots uh, motorsport. motorsport yeah. And so along those lines, they have, um, the, Z- the ZMSA have been able to tap into some of that um, um benefit <laughs> structure mm. structure structure yeah, structure. Um, yeah, not, yeah. It, it wasn't coming from a um a point of politicizing believe it or not <laughs> uh, the reason why i'm saying this is um people like seth right um and much younger actually um i'm thinking of my own cousins um, kids i may know right who are nine ten years old twelve years old yeah who may not have the chance to sit in a race car or even come close to one do you think this is something that we um all of us in the fraternity whether it's professional motorsports or not who share the passion of going fast in one form or another do you think it's something that we can push um to get the grassroots buzzing for this kind of sport such that even they at one point when maybe they're 18 yeah. can make the transition from esports to i'm hoping by then drag racing will be real here <laughs> or spinning or um rally or do you think it's something that yeah i think yes uh not only i think that it's going to become cardinal in my own assessment i believe that uh, in the years to come uh, sim racing is not only going to be part of if you want to become a professional ri- uh, racing driver not only will it become uh, part of your assessment process I think it will become a requirement yeah, to, mm-hmm. to have like some some type of good results they and so for jet fighters and for pilots right yes so, so I think that it's gonna become a very integral part of how we assess talent and how we develop talent as well in the motorsport industry um, what what I support growing it in that sense. Um, what I don't support is um, um, forcing it. I think that it's one of one of the grievances I've had, and what I've really been trying to push um, when I was involved uh, in the administration side of things with the Zambia Esports side, is mm-hmm. that there should always be a professional approach with how things are structured, how yeah. how engagements are made, and all of that stuff and um yeah 
I, uh, I think you should repeat that, but I think Patrick's headphones are not working. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was trying to catch it. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. <laughs> as long as you use the word structure, it's mm. important. Yes, mm. yeah. <laughs> I always advocated for, yeah. for, for the structure, the right structures to be put in place because that way we can really protect um, the sport itself uh, in terms of how progression is made and all that stuff. Yes. But also it's, it's important to be able to, to protect the the young um the young athletes the young racing drivers especially how involving it is eh exactly how tall it takes because you like i said to you, you you to be good at it you need to start quite young yes you know and you, if you if we have the right structures in place there's no reason why um parents and kids cannot work together to create a structure where you mix the academic and the um the sports side of things to create yeah. a full working career that even if you don't end up as a professional racing driver for example mm -hmm. you can end up as a good driver that enjoys motorsports that's involved in the industry you know where my where, where that question comes from um i don't know if you've been in 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 the dualies as the people like to call it right <laughs> and you've seen these kids play fifa or play uh, motor combat the passion and the enthusiasm that they have towards that. Um, I'll take FIFA as an example. I I can't play FIFA to save my life, right? Uh, I play it better than most, but I can't play it at the level at which some of these people are playing it. It's crazy. Yeah. And I know it qualifies also as an eSport. Um, I really wanted to pick your... your um, Call of Duty. Yeah, but <laughs> guns. Call anyway. of Duty is also big. It's also they big. Make, yes, they guns. make more money yeah, than I us. Think that, I they think make more money. <laughs> yes, I think the guns won't help sell <laughs> yes. the, the, the message. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is, um, if you, I don't know if you're into football. No. No. Okay. There's um, neither am that I. fantasy Premier League thing. Yes, I've heard. Your that. job is to manage who you feel will play better, and you score points for winning the simulated. Um, um, games that run on the platform, right? But if this kid that can't pass a few exams, a few testing, is not performing well at school, let me put it like that, is able to to figure that out. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Yes, we need to be able to mix, right? But is it something that we we, we should be riding on, isn't it? That, mm. that passion, that uh, enthusiasm towards esports, Yes, uh, and not just motorsport, obviously, but yeah. in this case, motorsport. I, I'm just imagining if we were to put a simulation, a simulator somewhere, and let these kids drive. Mm. Do you think it would hone some skills, hidden talent? It would reveal hidden talent. That yes, definitely yes, it will definitely help um, create more talents. But I wouldn't advocate for it uh, with just kids. You need to have. A proper social structure if you're growing up as a young person mm -hmm. in sport mm -hmm. because it's uh, I mean life is dynamic I, I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys that yeah. you're more way you're way more experienced <laughs> at life than I am but life is extremely dynamic and especially in sports where in motorsport you need to be able to focus solely as much as possible as efficiently as possible on uh, improving your your talent improving your capacity to race improving your capacity to understand what racing is and how mm -hmm. to do it and all that stuff you need to be in an environment that allows you to do that and if you're just this kid like i was mm -hmm. walking <laughs> these many kilometers away from home you know to get to this place you're already tired by the time you get there and sure you're winning all these races but there's not enough energy there's not enough resources and all that mm -hmm. stuff for you to actually take it anywhere yeah so i i mean i am saying yes to the idea but i don't want to advocate for that because i feel that you are gonna create a lot of talented young drivers with nowhere to go mm -hmm. i think in the long term it could be it could be harmful to the sport yeah but i guess i guess also also it it they, there's a good side to anyway this is just what i was thinking as you were sharing your answer and what 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 he said there's a lot of benefits to what covid did because i think covid really brought out all these esports you know and and stuff that happens online and really grew them 
So I think that maybe not in our lifetime we will not we might not see you know the esports and stuff like that become as beneficial you know for people getting into them but I I definitely believe that at least our kids coming behind will be able to say that I want to do you know esports when I grow up and it will be actually be something that you can do and people will believe in him as much as they believe these days in a lawyer yeah, or a doctor. For yes. It, mm. so, I, yeah. I I agree. But if over COVID come back work out. Now for career. Career heartbreak. Yes. Heartbreak is there but there's definitely a bright side, man. Yeah, yeah. There's no, definitely. I, yeah, it's definitely a bright side. I don't think yeah. like our I don't think Z gear would have expanded as much as it did you know and a lot of other people that blew up on social media if we were not all stuck in our houses you know looking at yeah I agree. yeah so all right now i think i think now we've reached the most interesting part i mean we, we spoke so long about other things because this question probably would only last two minutes mm-hmm. um oh, first and foremost the great escape the simulator yes how is it did you try it Yo, you tried yeah he tried yeah. Should, should should we all go and figure it out I want. tried it. Ask uh, me how it was. How was uh, it? Uh, it wasn't as a, I, it looks exciting, but it's not as exciting as it as it looks. I don't know. Maybe because I'm not good at the games and stuff, and I'm probably not as excited about playing Dirt. I think I played Dirt or something on on that thing, yeah. But um, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it was nice to be in the machine doing this and stuff. It's uh, ask me your question in a more structured manner because just because I don't want to I yeah. don't want to say something because obviously that's a business I don't want to say something and maybe, it maybe, be perceived yeah. maybe let me put it this way um, I think we spoke again off camera no it was on camera mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if it will make it into the podcast but um, <laughs> the question was um, rally right you're mm-hmm. now on the rally team Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Patrick and I were, were, were talking about this earlier and I asked him and I said, do you know anybody who has transitioned from esports to actual racing? I don't, other than you. Yeah. And that was like 90% of the reason I was so excited to have, uh, to come sit here and have a chat with you because um, it, it gives another answer to the question our parents always ask us, who do you know who? You get what I mean? I get it, but yeah. wait a minute. Look at what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, again, not to drive people away from some form of structure, because like you said, even this has a lot of structure. It requires a lot of focus, right? Yeah. How is... Have you had any seat time in the rally car? Uh, first test is next weekend. Okay. This as weekend, a, this weekend. As a passenger? As a passenger? <laughs> no? no a racing driver. driver. Ah, as, a passenger. As, a, as a passenger. Okay, yes. I'm sorry I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, did yes. we just ditch the, the sim? No, 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 no. The, the, the reason I'm asking is how, okay. how many hours of seat time in sim racing? <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? My, my, my point a is lot. Right? A lot. Uh, and so my question is, how does the sim racing compare to the, the real thing the real life but not the real thing mm. <laughs> okay. no but i mean i haven't had the real obviously the test is next weekend but i did race uh the cross carts in south africa yeah, yeah and i've done buggy testing uh, i've done i've done some driving off-road mm-hmm. and the the cross carts in south africa when we went for the fia rally star african final those things are bloody fast man yeah i think that much faster than my rally car that i'm driving for this season okay so the biggest difference between the esports and the real racing is uh, the real racing is much easier because it's much more intuitive what you need to do next to get the mm. car to rotate. So, mm-hmm. for example, um, when I got into the cross cart, the shifting was very second nature. In in sim racing, all you have to go with is the steering wheel and what you're looking at on the screen. So when the car is going. You have to see that the car is going and then you feel that the car is going and then you make an action on input Mm -hmm. to um, correct that. And that's the bad part about sim racing is that even when things are broken, they're broken in a perfect way. So you you know how to like overcome that. You Mm -hmm. know, there's a very specific scenario of what you can do to get out of that. Now with real racing, it's much more intuitive because there's all the other forces there. So mm-hmm. when you get into a break, 
uh, when you get into a corner, sorry, when you break, you know if you need to break more almost immediately because you can feel the force coming onto your neck uh -huh. through your spine and all that stuff. And you can feel as the wheel is going, maybe even before the wheel is going, you feel the motion that the car is in this way or it's in that uh -huh. way and all of that stuff. Um, but what is difficult with wheel racing and what doesn't come across is that there is a lot of fear. Yeah, like because you can die. you can be distracted. Like mm -hmm. the fear can distract you so much because let's say that you're at 120 off road over a jump or something, yeah. and you feel that uh, workout for your spinster muscle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you then, and in that moment you're thinking to yourself, I did not know my body could do that. Yeah, but yeah. you can't. You don't have time to do that because it's a split second. So you need to be thinking about all of the different factors. Uh, how the car is braking, how the shocks are reacting, how, what is the condition of the road in front of you, all of that stuff, you know. So that's, that's the other side of it, mm. you know. And um, yeah, I will say if you want, if you're getting into sim racing to be good at real, dr at, at real racing, I would say don't use it in the way that the professional esports drivers do. Because to be fast in esports, you need to take a lot of unrealistic exploits. Mm -hmm. So there's a the, the simulation you can't be too careful. Yeah, the simulation of it is very good in terms of how it uh, um, interprets and um, feeds back to you the forces mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. But it's all perfect. Mm -hmm. It's all extremely perfect. So you can really exploit that and kind of go beyond the limit. If you really want to become good at driving, if you're getting into, is, is into getting into sim racing and all that to become good at real driving, then you should do it in a way that builds discipline for you. Mm. So the way in which you implement the braking technique, yeah. stuff like that, how you rotate the car, how you learn about the rotation of the car, things like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I could say about that. Oh, cool. What, what um, for lack of a better term, what video games have you played? That you feel are preparing you for um, for the new role in rally. I'm, uh, I think we spoke again off camera <laughs> about Colin McRae. I think Colin McRae is the longest running rally game I've ever heard of. Mm. Yeah. I think it probably even transitioned into World Rally Championship. But now there's Dirt. There's how close are these to? Are these the same titles that you play at e e e e esports championships? Yeah. Or are there specific so, titles that only exist for? The they so at the world level in professional esports they always race the primary um or the most recently released version of uh, whichever aspect that is whether it's rally or gt3 or they race on the most prominent um, platform mm -hmm. and because it's esports they race on the platform that has whichever platform is providing the biggest amount of uh, prize pool of course yeah yeah which i think uh, most recently is um, Rensport. I oh. think they were giving away half a million or a million dollars in prize money or something. Mm -hmm. But every year, iRacing has got a Porsche Tag Heuer Championship, which is, I think, uh, about $200,000. And uh, NASCAR, uh, Coca-Cola NASCAR Series does $300,000 in cash prizes. So there are some pros that are actually making proper money from that yeah. stuff. Yeah, so now to get back to your question, uh, the pra the titles that I practice in are Dirt Rally 2.0 and EAWRC, which are the most recent um, uh, rally games to be released. Mm -hmm. And um, wh wh what else did you ask me? Yeah, the, the reason I'm asking, um, um, since you are going into rally, right? So it's uh, Dirt Rally 2.0 and obviously EA Sports uh, WRC, right? Yeah. In in your test that you're going to have this weekend, yeah. there's going to be someone screaming at you. Yeah. Which is not something that you really have in in sim. Yes, it's there. But it's perfect. But it's mm. perfect, right? Yeah. Um, um, how does that compare? Like, I, I, I guess maybe we should be asking these questions after he's... <laughs> <laughs> you've I'm sure you have, you've had some experience with that, so... Yeah. Mm. Um... I would say you don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah. The last thing that I'm thinking when I'm in a rally car is, oh, I wish I was in my sim. <laughs> or um, mm. do you only realize after, like, so 
whilst you're in the process of it, everything is very, it's very immersive. So yeah. it's all about what's right in front of you, what's happening next in that moment. And the only time that you make these uh, comparisons is when you go back home and you assess the new knowledge you acquired yeah. through the experience. And then you have a frame of reference of like, okay, this was similar to that. Uh, this thing that they're doing in the game is complete. Do yeah. it, mm-hmm. you know? So um, yeah, but like I said, what is still the same is the motions, understanding those motions. So for me, the important thing now that I'm training with is gear shifts. Understand, like, um, obviously when you're in the real car, you need to feel the real gear shifts, mm-hmm. but what really helps you a lot is getting that motion of the gear shift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the training that I'm referring it to. It comes to second nature, yeah. Yeah, that, because without sim, for example, all of that extra time that I'll have to spend learning how to do that type of gear shifting is time that is wasted in a real car. Uh-huh. But now I'm going to go into the rally car and I'm going to have the experience of all that shifting, um, how to change the gears up, how to you know bring change them down. Time, yeah. And now I'm just looking for other like small things. For example, what's the optimal RPM? Should I heel toe? Does it help? stuff like that Mm -hmm. all of that stuff that you consciously be learning is now to some extent for me uh, second nature so that's that's i think the big the big point to answer your question all right so what do you what do you do to prepare i was just thinking of what you do to prepare mentally for for a race whether it's esports whether it's um, you know the physical uh, rally racing and stuff is there anything that you do to you know just prepare yourself mentally and also how do you deal with because you've shared about some of the experiences of you know being let down um, you know people not coming through for you for different for different situations how do you actually work through the naysayers yeah you know the naysayers <laughs> and stuff like that how do you work through those things um so for for the esports side preparing mm-hmm. for a race mm-hmm. um thousands of laps <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically like a lot of practice um, I get my extra time in uh, as much of it as I can looking at the data mm. when I have an engineer with me and we can afford to do that we do that yeah um, do you have engineers for esports yes yeah. you do <laughs> yeah but what does an engineer do on esports interpret the data <laughs> What what are they interpreting? If I, I, thought, I thought on the on the game is like the way we used to play Need for Speed. You come out, put this part, put that part, whatever. If I if I showed you if I showed you the setup sheets for a Formula Three car, and they've got camber, toe, um, arrow, front wing, down uh, back wing, uh, toe in out, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. Now you need to balance the car in such a way that it will go in a straight line yes. adequately, and it will go through the corner without shunting you into the wall. Mm-hmm. If you change for each track, right? <laughs> yes, for each mm-hmm. track. If you change, let's say the camber by a few degrees, then you need to change a, whole bunch a few of stuff. a few degrees in the back or a few degrees in the front of the wing, and you need to balance it because mm-hmm. if that goes wrong, then you've got the wrong car. Maybe yes. you've got five kilometers less down the straight. So then on, so then on on eSport on your eSIM, you've got an engineer who you tell the data, then they set up your car. You you ask them what you tell them what you want from the car. Mm-hmm. They spend because obviously they're a lot more experienced than you. They these are like proper pros. Like these Wait, are the big so pros. <laughs> this you, is a revelation played, for me. Have you so, played uh, Gran Turismo before? Mm, yes, but not so much. Do you know what the tagline for Gran Turismo is? Mm. The real driving simulator. It mm-hmm. was the first game I ever played where you had to adjust camber. All those you had things, to adjust yeah. to and all of, and you could tell you had to adjust diffs, you had to adjust ratios. Mm. You could tell the difference on the Yeah, so what I'm what I'm trying to understand is when you're when you're in the game, you actually have guys who are specifically there to be engineers. Yes. That's that's what that's what pro racing is like. And they're pro level engineers in the esports yeah. scene. Yeah. When you have guys like uh, real racing drivers that come from from real life, like either mm-hmm. Formula One or Formula Two, they actually have their team engineer, like the real race car engineer, working on their car setup uh, mm-hmm. and giving them live feedback in their ears mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. Yeah. Ah, okay. So when you're done with the race, you can actually talk to an engineer. Then an engineer would. Well, I've never had that money. much money. <laughs> <laughs> 
so I've these guys do these guys also money. get paid with you like when you said you, uh, other races have a pool of 300,000 or whatever the team wins the it? team wins and you pay your engineer you pay yourself so it's not just a drive the yeah yeah mostly mm-hmm. because those guys they are like big entities uh, yeah. i think the biggest team right now is called team uh, redline uh, i think th- i don't know if they're transitioning not, not from copper belt eh? no <laughs> okay. team, red line, team, yes, yeah, board, team yeah. redline sim racing they they're transitioning to i think they're transitioning to verstappen.com that's a team owned and funded solely by max verstappen mm-hmm. i don't know if it's solely actually but i know that he's got a big um in, pot in that yeah and then there's Williams Racing, of course, uh, Mercedes yeah. AMG, Petronas yeah. Esports Racing. So there's all of, I think all of the big Formula One esports, uh, Formula One teams have They've esports, got an esports. Oh. division now, mm-hmm. and they're well taken care of. Mm-hmm. You know, so okay. um, the movie. How much of it? Wait, just before, did I answer your question? Yes, yes, sir, you did. Okay. So I was just trying to understand. Like, I understand Formula One. So now I, it's clear in my head that. It's actually like Formula One, the way you guys race, okay? Yeah, yeah. or Correct. rally, or, yes, or anything rally. that races. Yeah, uh-huh. the, the ones that have money. <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> because I mean, you can imagine. Um, I, at one point when I was interested in logistics, I wanted to understand how a team moves mm-hmm. from one venue to another, and then I I saw the amount of work, equipment yeah. mm-hmm. and work that it takes to move one team and i was imagining how many teams are in formula mm. one <laughs> by two drivers yeah. yeah yeah and that's when i realized that these things are not as they seem because we've met the race car driver mm. then there's somebody who puts the car together the information that is shared from driver feedback to yeah. mechanic to engineer to mentor to that this is i think that is the first time uh since i've actually been confirmed last week that yeah. someone has called me a racing driver <laughs> that's so good i was a racing driver because with a race car driver mm. yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. um yeah um the movie yes uh, what's it called grand, grand turismo yeah. i thought it had some other anyway um so the movie um real made me realize how long ago i played grand turismo first of all and then second of all there's that one scene i'm hoping patrick will allow me to have it inserted in the podcast um the one scene where he talks about the brakes not working and then the guy's like ah can't be serious and when the guy does check the car he finds that's the reason why the car wasn't supposed to, wasn't stopping mm-hmm. is that feedback to that level possible in your experience in a yes sim. in the sim in the sim to translate it to real life okay uh or should i you, ask this next week you <laughs> 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 you will never feel it in the sim yeah. like i said it's perfect you don't get break fade you don't get all that stuff but um because when you get on the break in real life you know you can that, feel it yes the, yeah. you can feel it so you it will you will be able to uh, make that um that distinction that that was not how it was supposed to be and um yeah you can make that feedback in in the manner in which cars behave uh, in the sim regardless of the actual physical feedback are you able to tell that uh maybe my error was wrong or too much downforce too little downforce or i braked too hard and that is why i didn't make the turn or that's why i had to overcompensate uh yes with experience with experience so one of one of the worst things um um in my experience chasira fu- chasira fu- mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so one of the disadvantages in my experience is that uh because i jumped when i got into proper esports when i came back with spen mm-hmm. we jumped directly into like a very extremely competitive level and um i was always just chasing lap times you know chasing speeds you are anytime you do anytime you do a good lap it's like the other guys take it personal and they show you just how bad that <laughs> lap was so uh because of that you're like under so much pressure to get everything perfect that you don't have any extra mental space to think of all the other things that are going wrong so even in those moments where you do get a mistake and all that stuff 
it's um, you don't notice it only after when you look at the data then you can see that this was wrong and blah 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 but as it stands now I'm the best driver I've ever been I am the most talented I've ever been I'm the fastest I've ever been and all those things are starting to come a lot more naturally to me I'm so the other day I wrote these words down here um, from what you've been speaking uh, because for me um, I have to explain to my wife first and to my son why this is probably better than going to study accounting at school and for me from what i've heard you're the best you've ever been um i've written down all these words here that i feel are life skills that you learn from something an experience like this that you can probably pass on to um whoever you're teaching to help them develop um these skills i, I know that there are some master's programs that use minecraft Minecraft. Yes. Uh -huh. um, and I don't know how to play Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah, but if if we are we are able to use technology to that level, why not take advantage of the platforms that are there? Uh -huh. Sorry, I, I interrupted you. You're the best you've ever been. Uh, you pick out the words that you feel. I, I hope my handwriting. Is. I can't yeah. read up those things. Uh, what <laughs> from here? <laughs> what do you want me to do with them? No, I'm saying any of these words speak to. To get it to the level you've come up to, all of them from, from where you hundred <laughs> percent all of them. Yeah, so. it's never just one thing; it's all of it. And the key is finding the balance of how you transition from being in one state of mind to the next one to the next one. You are, I actually I didn't answer that. I think in your question, mm -hmm. how you deal with the naysayers and the negativity yeah. and all that stuff. It's the realization that um, when people when people uh, judge what you're doing mm -hmm. without uh, taking the time to see from your perspective what it is that you're doing, it's not necessarily because um, you're doing something wrong. It's because you're doing something in a way that's different than how they would want to do it. Yeah. And because they have to justify it in a way that allows them to live, the life in, to live their life in the way that they live, uh, the easiest way for them to kind of get through that is to allow themselves to see you in the way that they need to see you. Mm -hmm. And once you've got that realization that it's not really... That you Obviously, you have to be conscious enough to, to question uh, whether what you're doing is right <laughs> yes, or whatever, yes. if it's uh -huh. harmful or whatever. But if you have the capacity to do it, you're not killing anyone and it's not harming anyone or whatever, and it's making you a better person then you come to the realization that it's not really you it's them yeah like this is who i am and you should be allowed to be who you are and if they are not able or if they're not in a place that they can see that or they can appreciate that then it the then the decision then becomes on you to allow them to be who they are so exactly. you must accept yeah. that and you, you let it be, you know, accept what is. to change everybody else, right? Yeah, yeah. and their but outlook on things. I think yeah. one of the most profound things I found, no, I th I've thought to myself is that... In the mirror. <laughs> in the mirror. <laughs> when you're not being the engineer. <laughs> mm. um, I'm trying to remember it now, but I believe it was that you don't change people. People change themselves because of love. And when people can't change, then it's because of your love that you decide whether or not to stay and allow them to be who they are mm -hmm. or to go somewhere else mm -hmm. and allow someone else to allow them to be who they are. I think that's what it is like to love, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Cool. Quite deep. <laughs> yeah, it really did. <laughs> okay, no, I think as just some final thoughts. Um, what do you think can be done to improve the esports environment here in zambia like sampa you know said mm. it's recognized by zmsa and as somebody who has been a part of it what are some of the things that you know can be done to improve just the the esports industry here in zambia um i would say that uh, they need more investment mm. if anyone is watching this anyone is interested or invested in helping develop grassroots I'm sorry, I'm in the middle of burping. As <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a casual podcast. You can burp. Okay. Ish. <laughs> Ish yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So anyone that is listening to this that is interested in developing grassroots for the future, you know, for posterity, for your own children, whatever. Yeah. Go and speak to them. Help invest. Help them get some more equipment. Help improve their capacity to um, have a venue if they can have somewhere dedicated. Whatever it is that you're able to do to help uh, contribute to the growth of that, I implore you to go and do it. You know, and obviously a, a big challenge uh, f- that I see is um, mostly on the structural side. You know, yeah. this is. Probably this might be something of my own preference. Uh, I always um, emphasize that uh, if there is such an important platform, it should be managed with um, as much professionalism and all that stuff as possible. Mm-hmm. But we must also allow for them to grow because obviously it's quite new. And uh, in all fairness to them, uh, practically almost everyone involved is very young. So the learning process is still ongoing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I believe in the project. I sincerely want to see it grow and develop because this is what I needed when I was coming up. I'm still coming up. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, mm. yeah, I believe yeah. that as we go as we go forward and as the sport continues to grow, um, it will grow better and better and better. And I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see that it becomes the most engaged and the best sport Pla- uh, sp- motorsport platform in the country. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I think Patrick and I want to know this. Um, what does it cost to start with, and what do we need to get into basic um, esports? In this case, motorsport, because obviously mm. there's Call of Duty, there's FIFA, there's Minecraft. Min- <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft. Um, yeah, that's it's, it's a mm. weird game. But anyway. Um, what do we need? It's uh, critical thinking skills. It, that's exactly the reason why it's... Uh, it's, it's um, yeah, they, they sit for hours. In Minecraft, to, in Minecraft. Yeah, you just have to feed them. And mm. Okay. Um, what do we need? Yeah, what do yeah. we need? What does the equipment so, look like? So when you say esports, you mean competitive esports? I'm talking about, okay, I want to do this for a year before I can call you up and say, hey, can you hook me up with the best where of I the can best. compete? Uh. Where, where am I starting? Because I know when you're starting pilot school, they start you out in a Cessna. Uh, yeah. Right? So where, where am I starting? Depends on how much money you have. <laughs> that is also true. <laughs> um, is this enough? Our current rig. Our current rig. <laughs> what do you have in there? Uh, 1080? Uh, 1070 Ti. For a start, yes. Uh, the computer, that should be okay. If you're running at basic 1080 gaming, mm-hmm. um, but in terms of the big thing is like the equipment stuff. Mm. I want to say that you can start with like a Logitech, which is the most baseline um, mm. entry, entry level, level. Entry level. or the most popular entry level wheel that's been available for most people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess you can start on a, a desk and a chair and all that stuff. But I don't believe that that will make you competitive. Mm-hmm. I'm saying this because of my own experience. I know that there are many stories about uh, people who started with that and have made it like pro and are like, you know, big time esports guys and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in my own experience, I failed to do it. And that's because I, I, I didn't have the access to the different communities, which is another thing, you know, being in a community with other professionals in yes. more established um, countries and all that stuff. I think it helps cut the learning curve uh, to the top spec uh, quality of driving. So personally, I was never able to achieve that with um, a desk and a chair. With a desk mm. and a chair and, and, the and a Logitech, uh-huh. mm. it, ca- it was very difficult for me in the iRacing platform and all that, and uh, most of the other sims that I raced because I couldn't understand what the car was doing. Uh, but also, I didn't come from esports; I came from karting, Cards, yes. so I was always looking for the the extra sensation that was missing to understand what I needed to yeah. rotate the car. Mm-hmm. So that might be another reason. So potentially that's a place that it could start. But if you're looking to be competitive, you know, to make it a career, like the people who are in the big leagues, in the Porsche Sports Cup, um, in the NASCAR and in the Rennes Sports stuff, 
I think you will need a lot more. Another thing to consider is that the people that you're competing against, they are using the top spec stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to be deluded to some extent to think that you're going to be less experienced. Um, With less practice. On less experience, good. less practice, less budget, and mm -hmm. less um, uh, access to the detailed information that you need to understand to, to become good at racing. And think that you're going to beat these guys who have got all of those things, factory team budgets, mm -hmm. and better equipment than you. I think that so it's not realistic. Are we talking about the, the thing that you sit in and moves with? Is that what we're talking about? No, 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 no. That. What are the yeah, Like, what are the top guys yeah, using? Like are they <laughs> using that big thing that uh, does that? No, 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 What are no, they no. using so, that as? So they're aspect? basically using. Uh, it's the drive monitor. Uh, sorry, the the drive base that you use. The, the pedals. The drive base and the pedals that what, you use. What's the drive base? Where the thing the that gives room? you the forces. The steering wheel forces. So it's the steering wheel. Yes. Okay, that's the drive base. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, the more capacity, the more newton meter capacity it has, the better it can interpret the forces coming in from the mm. from the simulation software, mm -hmm. and that gives you more detail and more feeling in terms of what to do with the car in that particular moment. Mm -hmm. um, so, so sorry. When you're saying Newton meters, <laughs> force. I'm trying, yes. So the force. I'm. What? Yeah. What do you? Where? Where do I feel the? If you if you if you've held a, um, a cheap steering wheel, mm -hmm. you can move it with your finger. Yeah. The the, mm -hmm. the more expensive stuff needs to generate enough force to counter. Oh. Uh, unless okay. I'm saying it wrong. It sounds so it's just closer, about it's just yeah. about right, it's yeah. closer at replicating the how thing. heavy the steering will feel in certain yes. turns yeah. and all, all and yeah. rest. Okay, that, that's my understanding of it. I, yes. I, I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. that's all that you have to go go with. So, mm -hmm. for example, if the back of the car is going, you know, maybe fractions of a second earlier than what you would do if you had a Logitech, Logitech. Oh. which was my which was my experience when I had the Logitech. I hated that. Mm. No, <laughs> cancel that. To Logitech, it got Can, you here. Can, yeah. Cancel that just in case Logitech is watching. <laughs> they might want in to fact, when you. when you say that, when I said Logitech, just beep it. <laughs> <laughs> beep it. Mm. Okay, so yeah, it's 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 that stuff where you will be able to uh, handle the car uh, better before you lose it, yeah. and you can understand a little bit more uh, what the car is doing and what inputs you might need to make mm. to uh, get it to do what you want it to do. But okay. a lot of that, a lot of the work is theory. To be good, to be fast in sim racing is understanding the theory of yeah. driving. Mm -hmm. So, and that you sort of practice in a simulator, and then okay. Um, so, basic gaming rig is what you need, because now you can get what forty seventies for. Mm. Do people do people compete on consoles? Like only you only Gran Turismo. Five? Only, only Gran Turismo. Oh, so all these others you have yeah. to have a PC. Pretty much, yeah. They there are titles on. Uh, I know, like EAWRC is an open platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means that if you have a PC or a Xbox, whatever, mm -hmm. you can compete. But it's always better when it's on PC. In mm -hmm. my experience, recently. Damn, I'm saying so many things here with companies that could potentially sponsor. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't right. worry, man. No, so yeah. maybe maybe what we can do, um, yeah. because I'm curious about this. Um, and uh, not for me, yeah. posterity, right? Uh, at the end of it all, maybe we could have a chat with him um, and we could come up with a basic spec yeah. and put them in grades mm -hmm. of where we can start so that people out there know that. Yeah, we can start you know, with this rig. Maybe it will cost you this much. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. you'd have that thing in the Great Escape. That's yeah, what yeah that's what the. You that's should what especially the not have that thing <laughs> in the Great Escape. <laughs> I thought that's what the pros are using. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's what um, mm. TV is showing us, but clearly we have it wrong. No, mm. that's just marketing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Cool. No, I think that, um, yeah, we've learned everything that we need to learn about esports. All we can say is thank you, Mr. K. M maybe for coming on if, to. If he can allow us, mm. when he does his first test, we can do a, a TikTok. I'm curious. TikTok. Yeah, yes. like a follow up, just to hear. Oh like, yeah, okay, yeah, how how it was. He's a race car driver. Yes, as yeah. a an, an official of, race yeah. car driver. So we can close the we, chapter. We were we were thinking uh, as an invite, would Zedgear like to become our official media partner for the first race? No, you can consider it. Yeah. 
you he will consider it. yeah <laughs> 100% yeah we'll discuss afterwards yeah we'll make it as easy for you as possible mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like feeling informed yeah so yeah. i think it would be nice to just a follow up um of what that was like yeah, yeah maybe something yeah. that you can add at the end of the podcast yeah that's um, cool yeah sorry i was closing down your um no, no my closing was no yeah. it's cool it's cool but definitely I, I if we have it on video, you can't say i didn't tell you yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right guys no thank you so much for joining us on this sixth podcast kambali six. thank, thank you so much for being uh, part of it you know taking us into what uh, esports is like and all that good stuff of course i can't uh, forget to tell you guys to subscribe to the youtube channel follow us on facebook as well and remember the magazine should be coming out this month and we'll talk a bit more about uh, esports there and you know just other good information that you guys can have but uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Peace.